Park City Council, emergency meeting. We'll call it to order. The uh, first thing on the agenda is to read the, the reason why we're doing this. Uh, pursuant to Minnesota Statute 13D.04, Subdivision 3, the City of Way Park will be holding an emergency meeting on March 20th, 2020 at 8.30 a.m. via teleconference that will be televised on the city's local television channel. Pursuant to Minnesota Statute 13D.021, Subdivision 1, the city administrator has deter determined that an in-person meeting is not prudent. The following items will be discussed. Number one, declaring a local state of emergency. And number two, resolution 03-2020-01, emergency personnel policy. All right, item B, council meeting, meeting via conference call. The city administrator has determined that an in-person meeting is not prudent and under Minnesota Statute 13D.021, Subdivision 1 believes that a phone conference with elected officials phoning into a conference call is warranted. The city council will follow the following process in accordance with state law. Number one, the city administrator will be present at city hall the meeting will be recorded and live on our city's public access channel. Item two, all votes will be done by roll call so there is a clear record of who is in favor or opposed to the subject vote. Item three, we will ensure that all members of the council are able to hear one another in all discussions and testimony. This meeting has been determined to be not feasible to be not feasible to have a public present at the meeting due to the health pandemic and emergency declaration and is authorized by Minnesota Statute 13D.021, Subdivision 1. The meeting will be televised on the city's public access channel. All right, item two, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, 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 and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, 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 God indivisible, indivisible, but liberty and justice for all. For all. All right, regular agenda items. Consider resolution on declaration of local emergency. So with this, um, given the uh, current uh, state that, that we have um, and the fact that the, the, the president as well as our own governor have declared um, state of emergencies within the um, United States as well in, within the state of Minnesota, um, and given the continual concerns with um, with the COVID-19, um, the mayor did sign yesterday a proclamation and declaration of emergency. Um, that information was included in your packet. Um, essentially what this does is just provides us um, from additional measures to ensure that we're being able to provide um, for the services that are necessary for the public, um, our staff, um, and working with each other uh, different agencies. Uh, that declaration um, and proclamation that the mayor signed gives him the authority to do that for a period of 72 hours. Um, for that to be extended, um, what is before you is the consideration um, of a resolution um, and acted under authority of Minnesota Statute Section 12.29 and 12.37 to extend the period of a mayor declaration for the local emergency. Um, this will really, again, um, provide us the ability to provide emergency services to the community. It allows the City of Waite Park to invoke um, any portion of our disaster plan uh, that we may feel necessary for response to recover from this emergency. And it can, ad in addition, it may aid in the city's ability to seek potential state and federal funding. I'd be happy to answer any questions related to this. Um, and that is essentially the, the first action that's required of the council. All right, let, why don't I read that resolution? Okay. Uh, just for people at home, because it's not up on the screen. So, a resolution enacted under authority of Minnesota Statute Sections 12.29 and 12.37 to extend the period of a mayor declared local emergency. Whereas, the mayor of the city of Way Park has declared that a local emergency is in effect in the city as of March 19, 2020. And whereas the City Council of the City of Way Park agrees with the Mayor's findings and further finds that the situation will last for more than 72 hours and that immediate action to respond to a local emergency is needed in order to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the city and community. And whereas the City Council finds that this emergency, which involves an outbreak of an infectious 
disease, COVID-19, is a highly fluid and evolving situation. And in the interest of the public health, a response or action may be needed that requires deviation from standard procedures for procuring goods and services. And whereas Minnesota statutes 12.29 and 12.37 authorize the actions taken in this resolution and provide that emergency contracts and agreements are not subject to the normal purchasing and competitive bidding requirements because of the local emergency. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Way Park, Minnesota, as follows. Number one, the Mayor's declaration of a local emergency is continued in effect until further action of the City Council. Item two, City staff is authorized to enter into agreements and contracts necessary for the procurement of materials, equipment, services required to respond to a local emergency. Item three, the Mayor and City Administrator are authorized to execute any necessary agreements, contracts, and related documents regarding the local emergency necessary to implement corrective action relative to the local emergency to protect the health, safety, and welfare of the city and community. <coughs> Item four, City staff is authorized to take any appropriate action and to prepare any appropriate documents to facilitate the directives of the Council as set forth in this resolution. Item five, the mayor, city administrator, city staff, city attorney, and city consultants are authorized and directed to take any and all additional steps and actions necessary or convenient in order to accomplish the intent of this resolution. This resolution of a local agency emergency will invoke the city's disaster plan. The portions that are necessary for response to, rec and to and recovery from the emergency must be used. And it says passed by the City Council of Way Park, Minnesota. I guess uh, I need a motion to approve that, and we can discuss it. Frank Tyson will move to approve. Who was that? Frank. Frank moved to approve. Okay. This is Ken all second. And Ken Schmidt seconded. Okay. Is there any further discussion on that resolution? Yes. Uh, yes. Mike. Okay, go ahead. Uh, under, in the resolution or declare the declaration of emergency, uh, paragraph seven, uh, let's see, let me get down here, seven, it says, whereas COVID-19 has been identified by the World Health Organization as a pandemic, and the United States, Cent United States Centers for Disease Control has provided guidance for individuals, healthcare professionals, businesses to slow the spread of the COVID-19, which, which include canceling or postponing in-person events and involve that involve more than 50 people for eight weeks. Um, in that statement, does this mean that uh, if the schools are start back up, that they cannot start back up in the city of Wake Clark until we declare this uh, a non-emergency anymore? Um, sure. and do it include schools, churches, uh, any kind of activities? Um, hotel, motels have more than 50 people. Um, we have a, uh, what is that called over there, that uh, adult daycare center, uh, those types of things. This is Shauna Johnson um, and um, Mike. This is just the guidance that we have. Those kinds of things we'll take from the direction of the state. Um, and allow them to be able to handle that from an emergency standpoint. Um, we're just utilizing it for our own abilities to be able to respond to these types of situations. Um, it isn't in our intention to have any authority, nor do we have any authority over the schools and all of those things. And Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, if there's any additional, but my understanding with this declaration is really more for our purposes of following both the state and federal guidelines and allow them to be able to respond um, to those and, and let us know when it's safe for those things. So we essentially, the way that has worked now is any of those businesses that have been authorized to close, 
um, that has come from the governor's office and then has been, uh, we, have the, um, uh, we have the authority and, and we have to um, work with them to ensure that those businesses within our community are following those guidelines. Because yeah, if you, this is Rick, if you notice that there's 50 people and it's been as low as 10 now, so it's, that, it, that, that's an ever-changing uh, number. This is, this is Vic. Can I add a couple things here? Yep. Yeah, my reading, my reading of the, um, our emergency, our emergency plan, um, section 23 sub 3, indicates that this resolution is only good for 30 days um, or at the end of the emergency, whichever comes first. That what this would indicate to me is that we, this, is, this is in effect for 30 days, uh, after which time the city council is going to have to, again, uh, vote to reestablish it as a practice for us. Now, do I read that correctly? Yes. Okay, my other, my other question has to do with, um, I don't see our uh, emergency manager listed in this resolution. And as I read the section 23 sub four, um, our emergency manager is, is the lead person in this activity. But I notice here on, on number five, um, we don't list even the number, we don't list our emergency manager. We just passed that emergency plan in December. Yeah, this is Frank Tyson. Our Sonic can respond to the question, but that's intentional because the names change. So Dave is that person, correct? Yes. That's my understanding. If, okay. Um, Vic, if you refer to the actual declaration, it talks about the emergency management director and the city admin administrator, and then throughout that, um, it also indicates that um, that it does give us for any other appropriate personnel. So this is really a jointed efforts between between us. So if you go back to the um, declaration of emergency, um, in this case, it does follow um, and provides that direction for that. Um, but who's, who's the lead? This is Mike. Who is the lead? If we go by what we passed in December, Dave would be the lead on this, followed by the uh, city administrator and mayor. The, just for correction purposes, I, I think what we need to just make sure is, is it depends upon what the response is. As it relates to the personnel and the operations of the city, um, as far as the staffing and all of that, that does come through the city administrator, and we're working very closely with the, the emergency director, but it doesn't give that person, it doesn't give um, the emergency manager the authority to have over all of our staff. He's working with, you know, the agencies, um, making sure that we're providing all the services necessary. So this is a jointed effort. So it's a... It's really, I think, covered in both the declaration as well as in the resolution um, that those efforts are going to continue and will continue to be able to be provided um, at the di administrator's direction in assistance with the emergency manager when necessary and then also with the mayor. Well, I, this is Vic again. My concern is that the mayor's declaration says the city administrator and the emergency management director um, when we go to the actual resolution, it lists a larger number of people, but does not specifically include the emergency management director, and I think that's something we need to correct. Should be, uh, this Mike, that probably, the wording should be changed and added there. Um, and I think in my first question on paragraph seven, it should probably read up to uh, the amount of days that it says there rather than a specific amount of weeks. Yeah, uh, 50 people for eight weeks. It should read up to eight weeks, I believe. This is Shauna. One thing I want to point out about the declaration that you have as an attachment, this has been something that the mayor approved, okay? So what you're asking to be changed is, our, is something that the mayor enacted with that. What I'm asking you to take action on is that resolution. This, I realize that this declaration um, of emergency is something that you're going to be extending. So it's, it's kind of that. I don't think we need to get caught up into the statistics of that because the direction that we're taking is really from the state and federal government. Um, these are templates that we've received 
from other cities that are following the same exact process. So I understand that you might have specific concerns. I am confident that we have the right measures in place. This has been reviewed by um, Dave, all of our other department heads, as well as our city attorney on how we're doing that. There are certain roles and responsibilities that are still going to be my responsibility to handle, as well as Dave. So this is a jointed effort. I think things are covered. If you would like me to add the um, emergency management into some of these points, I don't know that it makes a big difference, but I'm more than happy to do so. Um, I'm really just looking at trying to be able to have the ability to continue to um, give that more of that discretion to our staff and myself to be able to handle and be able to work on different things that we may need to um, as things move forward. Now, this is Vic again. Um, I just had that specific concern. Um, I'd also like to make sure that um, we, the, we, the city council, the elected members here, um, continue to be informed in what's going on. I think that um, we're a really small group. There's, there's no reason why four more people can't be involved at some point to understand what's going on in the city. And I would like to see um, either uh, the, the administrator or the uh, emergency management person um, give us a written report on a bi-weekly basis every two weeks as though the city council were meeting in terms of what's going on with the activities in the city during the first 30-day period while this resolution stays in effect. Yeah, and I, and I think you'll get that, uh, Vic. I, 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 we, I would hope that we will keep you up to date, maybe even more than it bi-weekly, maybe even weekly if, if things change, because things are changing so quickly. that we, Since well, this has I gone was, on... My, I was going to put that same comment into the next resolution we have to pass. Um, uh, we can talk about that in the next one, because that kind of comes out in there. So... Uh, that was my concern also that we as a, a council uh, aren't mentioned in here uh, that we received the updates or uh, anything, but uh, I'd like to bring that up into the next resolution we have to pass. All right, any other discussion on this resolution? I have a motion. No, I, just want to, I just want to clarify for my own information, just to think again, that this resolution is in effect for 30 days. That's correct. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. I'm going to do a roll call vote, and I'm going to do them alphabetically. So uh, all in favor, uh, Mike? Yeah, with the minor changes in it. Um, clarification. The motion that was on the table was just to approve it. Just so to approve this resolution. Not with it has motion. to be, this one. in order for any changes to be done, the... the person that made the motion, which was Frank, and the one that seconded it, which was Ken, needs to have their motion amended. And so this, either... Uh, this, is, this is Frank. And my motion is to uh, pass the rule of resolution as presented. All right. And is that your understanding, Ken? Yes, it is. All right. All in favor? And I'm going to do them again alphabetically. Mike? Mike? Yeah. All right, Rick? Aye. Ken? Aye. Vic? Yes. Aye. And Frank? Yes. Aye. Okay, passes unanimously. Thank you, guys. All right, then we'll go to item B. Consider resolution and emergency personnel planning policy. This is really... Uh Designed in a lot of this is already in place um, as far as the administrator. I'm just wanting to ensure that as we continue to move forward that uh, there may be um, the need to possibly um, create some additional um, flexibility within our own um, personnel policies. Uh, this is really more of the administrative side of it. This really more affects me and the, in the management and operations of our staff. Um, and so the resolution is really intended to be able to just make sure that those kinds of things are covered. Um, and so I am happy to read the resolution unless, Rick, you would prefer to do that. No, either one. I don't care. Uh, so it's, it, it's a resolution of the City of Waite Park approving emergency personnel planning policy. Whereas during an emergency management situation, as defined by the emergency management director, 
the city will follow the Center for, of Disease Control, Minnesota Department of Health, and Stearns County Health guidelines and recommendations suggested emergency planning and risk management mitigation steps. And whereas there may be times during an emergency management situation such as a pandemic where alternative work arrangements may be a necessity to keep business operations functioning and employees and the public safe. And whereas the alternate work arrangements may be considered during times of local, state, or federal recommended, recommended guidelines during community mitigation or emergency management strategies. And whereas the alternative work arrangements may include working remotely, flexible work options, paid administrative leave, and whereas the city administrator or their designee <coughs> will determine that which alternative work arrangements best fits the needs of the city to keep employees and the public safe. And whereas in emergency situations requiring risk mitigation and management planning, the city administrator or their designee will determine, one, if employee leave banks must be exhausted prior to requested absence, Two, if employees will be allowed to go into deficit into their banks. Three, if paid or unpaid leave is authorized. Four, if health insurance premiums shall be prorated. And whereas the basis of such determination will not, will be to not provide employees a financial incentive to risk the public's health, safety, and or well-being. And now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of Waite Park, Minnesota, that the City of Waite Park has adopted the emergency personnel Planning policy as outlined in this resolution, and this will be in effect as long as the City of Waite Park's declaration of emergency is in effect. Um, I did hear from conversations from previous about making sure that the council is updated. We have been doing our best efforts to do that right now. Um, we have provided you as the updates that we've had available to us, um, and we're still working and operating as best that we can. Um, and so I would just recommend that you consider this and would be happy to answer any additional questions that you might have. All right, Council, got any questions? Mrs. Mrs. Frank, I just wanted to, if you didn't make it clear, I wanted to make it clear that it does sunset uh, with the emergency. Oh. So I will yes. move to approve as presented. All right, Frank. Mrs. Mrs. Ken, I will second that. And Ken, second. Further discussion? Well, the only discussion I had is the same as Vic, um, that we receive proper updates on this stuff as it occurs. Um, and also in this, I'm understanding that this is more for administrative type situations. Right. Is that uh, correct? This is for all of our staff. I oversee all of the staff essentially yeah, all, through yeah, the department all, heads. So it provides the ability to be able to work with our department heads to be able to try to implement anything that we need to be able to help us accommodate um, during this crisis. Yeah, so my, this is Rick. Mike, when you say staff or administration, administration is a whole thing in this case. Oh, yeah. Um, are we following then the same? We got recommendations from uh, the CGMC about the FMLA, is this part of that? Yep. And are you following the procedures from them? Well, those just came out yesterday. Yep. So those are not, those are actually federal. So yes, we will be doing that if we end up in a situation where that um, is, is warranted. So yes, um, the, the challenge, as you all know, with all of this, as soon as we try to provide an update, something changes. And so we're, um, we're aware, aware of that moving, um, and that seems to be continual. And yes, that's our intention. Our, our, our first priority really is our community and our, and our staff and keeping them safe. And that's the things that we're doing. And we've taken extra precautions and measures to be doing that now, um, and we'll continue to do that. All right, any other discussion? <laughs> would, would that have to be, this might, would that have to be added in under no. the new FMLA law? No. Then no. In this no. resolution, no. or is that just an no. administrative? All of those things, if you reason. read that first, I mean, we have to follow all the laws that are provided, so there's no reason to do that. Those laws are probably going to change tomorrow for, for what we know at this point, so... I don't think that that's necessary in this. That's that is implied. Okay. This is Frank. I'd assume FMLA is its own federal guideline. Do you, they're not 
really intermixed into this. That's correct. All right, any other discussion? All right, all in favor, Mike? Yeah. Rick, yes. Ken? Yeah. Vic? Yes. And Frank? Yes. All right, passed unanimously. I believe that's all the uh, all that's on the agenda for the day. So it's uh, 8.55, and we can adjourn. Thanks, people. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, bye. Bye. Yeah.